In the stomach, there are three principal types of uh, neuroendocrine neoplasm. You've got type 1, type 2, and type 3. Patients with type 1 neuroendocrine uh, neoplasms often have uh, lots of little polyps uh, scattered throughout uh, the stomach. And they're often diagnosed incidentally um, at, a, at an endoscopy done for some other reason, a bit of indigestion or investigating uh, anemia. In that scenario of finding the little polyps, if they're less than one centimeter in size, often nothing needs to be done at all. And we tend to follow patients on uh, an annual basis with just an endoscopy. If there are polyps greater than one centimeter in size, between one and two centimeters in size, one might remove those polyps uh, at endoscopy. And sometimes we have to do an endoscopic ultrasound which is like having an endoscopy or gastroscopy looking into the stomach, but at the end of the probe, there's a little ultrasound uh, probe which can tell you how deep that little polyp is extending and whether it's safe to remove endoscopically. Usually it is, and um, that's uh, a procedure that's commonly performed, but only necessary for uh, polyps greater than a centimetre or two, uh, up to two centimetres in size. For polyps greater than two centimetres in, in size, Sometimes one might remove them endoscopically. Sometimes local surgery is required. What one would say is the day of having to take out the whole stomach, a total gastrectomy, those days should be over. and No one should be needing to have a total gastrectomy except in incredibly rare circumstances. And even in that scenario, you would always want to seek a second, uh, second opinion. So the type 1 gastric carcinoids are associated with multiple small polyps, it's an indolent process. There's a special antibody blood test that you would want to be checked for called parietal cell antibodies. And um, it's by the body having, attacking, if you like, the acid producing cells in the stomach that causes these little polyps to develop. And you can just do a blood test for those parietal cell uh, antibodies. So it, type 1, usually very straightforward, rarely spreads and rarely needs further uh, investigation. The type 2 uh, gastric carcinoids are often associated with um, a neuroendocrine tumour, neuroendocrine neoplasm that's making the hormone gastrin. And that hormone uh, gastrin not only can cause um, stomach ulcers and uh, diarrhea because there's so much acid around, but that hormone gastrin can cause some of the uh, endocrine, the hormonal cells in the stomach to grow into little polyps, which are neuroendocrine tumor uh, polyps. The primary uh, gastrinoma is usually found in the duodenum, in that bit of the small intestine and occasionally the pancreas. So, may, so you'll find neuroendocrine tumors there. But because it's making a hormone gastrin, you can get type 2 neuroendocrine neoplasms with these growths in the stomach. It's really quite rare to have these type 2 gastric uh, carcinoid tumors. What is important about it, though, is that if you have um, gastrinomas, that 25% of patients can have a familial, so it can run in the family uh, with this condition, multiple endocrine neoplasia type uh, 1. The treatment for gastrinoma, where there's lots of extra acidity, are the common anti-acid drugs such as uh, omeprazole and, and that class of drugs called proton pump inhibitors and occasionally Zantac, um, old-fashioned, what are called H2 receptor antagonists. And they mop up the and prevent, and secretion of extra acid. And that's important in controlling the symptoms. Um, if there are high hormonal levels related to gastrin, um, then patients may go on to the somatostatin analogues, uh, once monthly octreotide or sandostatin injections or the lanreotide um, injections. And patients would be worked up as per other neuroendocrine tumors with a gallium octreotate uh, PET scan. They'd also have uh, CT uh, uh, scans or uh, MRI scans uh, as well. And we'd be checking hormonal levels um, in the blood and checking the hormonal uh, tumour marker, chromogranin A, um, as well. So that's the type 2 uh, gastric uh, carcinoid. The type 3 gastric carcinoid tend to be more aggressive or have a more aggressive potential. So these can be solitary neuroendocrine neoplasms within the stomach. 
they can be ulcerated so they can bleed uh, a little bit as, as well and they're often two or three centimeters sometimes more in size and they can uh, spread a little more easily than any of than type 1 and type 2 neuroendocrine neoplasms so anyone who's got a type 3 um, isolated um, a neuroendocrine neoplasm in the stomach is not associated with, with the uh, antibody test, the gastric parietal cell antibodies. So it's, and so these patients don't have that sort of background. And often in patients, if they've just got an isolated uh, lesion in the stomach, you need, if it can't be removed endoscopically, and one would always be cautious about endoscopic removal, unless it's a very small uh, uh, lesion, less than two centimeters, then you might need a, what's called a local wedge resection. You just take out that bit of the stomach where, uh, where the tumor is affecting. But there is a predisposition to spread elsewhere, and therefore it's important to have a CT scan or an MRI scan to check that there's no spread elsewhere, and also to have either gallium octreotide PET scan or an octreotide uh, scan. The type three gastric carcinoids are not associated uh, with other syndromes uh, usually.